All right. So let's do this together. We are going to use org and session cache. First step, we want to create a partition. So if you followed the previous video, the previous section, we've created, uh, we requested the trial cache, which we already have now. So now in setup on your Trailhead Playground, go to platform cache, platform cache, and then click new platform cache partition. So we are here already. If I go back to platform cache here, and new platform cache partition at the bottom there. So what should we label this? Um, we are going to name it, well, it doesn't uh, give us an option. So we're just gonna name it um, trail head module partition. Okay, it's going to be a default partition so how are we going to divide this? Let's see how we want to divide that. Zero for a session cache, zero for org cache. So both is zero. All right, so it's all zero. Okay, let's follow along. So I'm gonna save this, it's all zero here. I'm gonna save this. Um, oh yeah, we can't have a space paste there and hit save. Now we have our first platform cache. All right, let's go back to our trail. So cache key name format. Each cache key has the following format. Namespace, which is trailhead. What did we name it now? Oh, oh this is just local because we don't have the namespace on this playground. So namespace partition key, right? So for example, this one local, which is our namespace is local, right? Local dot currency cash dot dollar to euro rate. That's an example. So for example, this snippet stores a value in the org cash for the dollar to euro rate key. Cash dot org dot put put where this is the key so namespace which is local dot the name you've put here which is on my case it's trailhead module right and then the key which we haven't created yet um dollar to euro rate and this is the value right so we can create that so the partition we created is a default partition. So you can omit the namespace and partition name and just specify the key name. This is when you actually code it, okay, on your code. All right, so now we've done that. Okay, store and retrieve data in or cache. So this is how you actually do it in Apex. So get the partition, cache.org partition. You name your variable here, org part, right? And then equals cache.org get partition. And you name local.currency cache. This is your partition name. For me, for my example, is trailhead module. So I would say local.trailhead module. All right. So um, org part, and then put to, you name your own key dollar to euro rate and then you put the value what's the value so for example if you've done a really complicated calculation you've done that and you have a variable so you if you want to cash that you do this org part which is this right dot put you start it in a cache name the key whatever key you want to call it and then the value of it and then this is it that's it so String, if you want to retrieve it, cache rate equals string org part dot get the key, which is this key. Pretty straightforward and powerful, right? So, do cached values last forever? The previous example assumes that everything goes correctly, namely that platform cache is enabled and has partition with available space. The cache value is found in the cache 
the value is successfully stored in a cache, but something might go wrong, right? But in real life, cache data is not always guaranteed. Remember that, it's not always guaranteed. Platform cache is intended as a temporary space. For example, the cache might have expired. Even if the cache is still alive, it is possible that your cache data might be evicted uh -oh, from the cache. So, just like the chipmunks clean out their cheeks to make space for more acorns, platform cache also clears some space for more data. When the partition limit exceeded, Salesforce evicts cache data based on Salesforce or on a least recently used LRU, LRU algorithm. So your, your cache value might just be gone, right? Remember that. So you have to make sure it's there. Test the value, okay? So when will it, it expires? The amount of time during which data is kept in the cache is called the time to live value or TTL sex. You specify the time to live value when you store key value pair in the cache using the Apex methods. For session cache, your data can live up to, so but you have to define it. It can live up to eight hours in the cache. For our cache, 24 hours, okay? But you can define it. So best practice for handling, see, cache misses. What if it's missed, right? So let's see. As a best practice, your code should anticipate and accommodate points of failure. In other words, always assume that a cache miss can happen. A cache miss is when you request a value for a key from the cache, but the value is Nada is not found, null, blank. The value that your get call returns is null. Check the result with the get call for the null and handle it accordingly. Let's just see the example here, okay? So cache, we are just going to try to grab it, right? But then check. If cache not equals null, then do the code. Means the value is good. But what if it's blank or it's null? Then do, recalculate the thing, all right? So that's how you handle it. Store and retrieve data in session cache. So same thing, you get the partition and then you session part dot put. So it's session part, not or, or, uh, this one, session part, because it's session partition, not org partition. That's the only difference. And the other stuff is exactly the same, okay? Access platform cache with visual force global variables. So we can access it with global variables. Look at this. This is a visual force tag, apex output tax value, cache.session.ex pro currency cache favorite currency rate. You can do that as well. And this is how you uh, ex uh, uh, do it with the key. All right. And this is how you do it. Um, if, if the cache value is a data structure that has properties or methods like an Apex list or a custom class, access those properties in the cache session expression using dot notation. So this is how you do it. This example access the value property of my data cache value that is declared as custom class. So my data dot value. All right, protected cache allocation for ISV apps. So what is this? By using platform cache ISV apps, like um, the Salesforce uh, vendors, runs faster and have better performance. If you are an ISV developer, you can guarantee cache space for your apps by purchasing cache space with your own namespace. So this is if you want to launch your apps on an app exchange and you are an ISV partner. So means basically you get better, better performance, all right? So this is how everything is um, organized there. As, as you can see, you can see it yourself. And next is our hands-on challenge. So we are going to do this hands-on challenge on a separate video. I'll see you on the next video. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button 
and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.